James McCain Meek was a true Victorian. His life spanned the 19th century. And he was one of those astonishing colonials who turned his hand to um, a huge range of occupations to make a living. He arrived very early in 1838 in Sydney, and he arrived in Ballarat early in the Goldfields period at the end of December 1851. He returned to Ballarat uh, at the end of his life, hence this Ballarat focus on the ex in the exhibition. But he also spent 16 years in New Zealand where he produced a really large body of work as well. The flagship work in the exhibition is Ballarat's historical gum tree. This was done in Meek's later Ballarat period. He did this in 1895. And it's certain it is the work that really began the exhibition. It was the single work which was held by the art gallery here. And we needed to know who Meek was. Uh, we needed to know more about this quite eccentric work uh, with a lot of uh, uh, very lavish text in it. And we needed to find a context for, for it. What else had Meek done? Who was he? Where had he come from? So that was the starting point of the exhibition and the focus here. It relates closely to Meek's very early time in Ballarat, where he did some of the earliest sketches of the Ballarat landscape. And we have the police camp sketched in 1852, which Meek then repeats in the Ballarat's historical gum tree sketch. The other group of works that is of interest to us is Meek's other early sketch of the first house in Ballarat, which was in fact Meek's own dwelling. So Meek arrived, he did well on the gold fields, and in less than a year, he was able to spend 406 pounds putting up the first solid dwelling in the township area. This was something he was very proud of. It was part of the reason he self-styled himself founder of Ballarat. And this is an image that he returns to frequently over the decades. And it was also an image which was taken up by a younger artist, George Grant. And we have a commissioned oil painting taken from Meek's sketch. And Grant continued to, do, uh, to use that same image over painting photographs of Meek's sketches in the 1890s. There was a lot of nostalgia for the early days of Ballarat 40 years prior at that time. The other significant Ballarat material that we have in the exhibition is Meek's Ballarat past and present. Again, at the end of his career, he'd returned to Ballarat and in 1893 produced this large work detailing the history and the achievements of what was now a tremendous city and which he could remember very well as uh, a, a messy patch of scrub with a lot of diggings on it. We also have the original, what we fondly describe as our Dead Sea Scroll, um, the original work which Meek donated to the, the Art Gallery of Ballarat here in 1895, two years after he had made it. In his diaries, it's clear that he expected that the Art Gallery would buy this magnificent work. But it was the 1890s and the Art Gallery wasn't buying anything. Um, and also it's graphic art. It wasn't a, a, an enormous European landscape, which is really what they favoured. So Meek's work wasn't bought, but he donated it. It was moved out of the collection in the 1930s, considered more of historical than art interest. And this exhibition brings Meek's original work back to the gallery for the first time in 120 years. So that's been a great joy, both to relocate it, um, it we found it in the collection in the Gold Museum, and to bring it back to the gallery for this, uh, for this event. One of Meek's really fabulous works, which he did quite early in his career in 1861, is this Atlas of the Australasian Colonies. Here we have a photolithograph of it. You will appreciate that the original 
uh, of Meg's large works were something like nine by six feet. So their originals, most of which are lost, the pen and ink uh, drawings on paper, we have only two surviving. They were very large and they could be photolithographed down to smaller sizes. This one he entered in the Victorian Exhibition in 1861. It was given a first prize certificate and he happily sent it off to the International Exhibition in London the following year where it was awarded a gold medal. And this certainly uh, cemented Meg's reputation as a graphic artist of note in the colonies. The nice thing about this work is that uh, the gallery actually purchased this. It just came up for sale during the time we were preparing the exhibition and the gallery actually bought it for their collection. So not only have we brought Meek back where he belongs after 120 years, but we've also made amends by adding to our collection with this very fine example um, of his work. Meek spent 16 years in New Zealand between 1874 and 1890 and he did uh, a, a really substantial body of work while he was there. His masterwork is the Chronological Tree of New Zealand History. We do have the original of Meg's masterwork um, held in the Wellington, uh, the New Zealand National Library in Wellington, and uh, it, it is a marvellous thing to behold. It was too large, um, it would have been a phenomenally expensive loan and it would have dominated the entire exhibition at nine and a half by six and a half feet. We have that work on an interactive unit, so it's possible to get up close and personal with Mr Meek's original there, which is a nice experience for visitors. So throughout his life as a working graphic artist, he would, do, um, he would provide templates for family trees that people would uh, complete and put in the front of the family Bible. And he would from time to time do um, special commission genealogies such as the Mats Matson Manifold uh, tree uh, there, which is a lovely connection between New Zealand where he was living and where this commission was um, carried out and the Manifold family in the Western District here in Victoria that family uh, was connected and Meek knowing both places very well, I think that particular commission would have had special resonance for him. The project has been marvellous um, and it's been a great thrill finding so much of Meek's work. When we began we were aware of one or two or three works of Meek and in fact um, during the course of the research I've discovered over 60 works not all we have images of, some are just known by um, descriptions in newspaper reports and reviews. Fortunately, Victorian um, journalism ran to fairly elaborate descriptions, which is very lucky for the researcher. Um, but as I say, we don't have images for all, but we found a huge body of work by Meek and a lot of marvellous tales about his life and adventures uh, and a few ripping yarns. So it's been a tremendous thrill for me to discover Meek and for the university and the gallery to bring Meek back and launch his third Ballarat career.